Today we are going to see how to create a stylized tsunami wave. It's heavily inspired by Naomi's ulti from League of Legends, yes, but I'm not going to replicate it exactly step by step. What I'm going to show you is how to create the core of this wonderful effect, the wave. This is also essentially a great tutorial on how to create stylized water effects and attacks and abilities. And in case you want to get your hands on this project and many others, it's all available on my Patreon's page and the support is very much appreciated. Links below. So, without further ado, let's jump right into this. And if you have a closer look, you will notice that we have a few meshes that we need. And as usual, in this channel we are going to use Blender, because it's free and it's easy to pick up. So, I am using Blender version 3.1.2 and we need a clean scene. So with A, I'm going to select everything and press delete. And then with Shift A, we can start with a plane. Now we need to scale this to more or less the size of a wave that we want. We can press S and then Y to lock it in the Y axis and type 3 and then enter and do the same S but this time in the X axis but a value of 2. Let's enter in edit mode with tab and with Ctrl R we are going to add an edge. We can press enter, move it to the right a value of minus 0.5. Still, with these two vertices selected, we want to push this up by pressing G and locking this in the Z axis, a value more or less between 0 0.7 and 1. And here we go, we have our wave. <laughs> just kidding, this is just the beginning. Let's increase the poly count. So yeah, if you are developing for mobile, be careful. We are going to use a modifier called the subdivision surface and we can increase the levels to 2 of the viewport. For now, with Ctrl R, we can add two edge loops by scrolling up and then by pressing enter so they stay in the same position and we want to scale this with S only in the X axis more or less this size we want to leave a gap and the idea now is to select these two vertices by holding shift by the way press G and lock it in the Z and then hold control and it will snap but as you can see it's not snapping to the closest vertice so let's press escape and if we want to change the snap, we can use Ctrl Shift Tab and then select Vertex. It will snap to Vertex, to the closest vertex of your mouse. Now G, lock it in the Z, push it down and hold Ctrl so it snaps to this vertex. Great, here we go, we have a much better wave than the low poly one we started with. But what really matters is that we add another edge loop more or less around here with Ctrl R. Select these two vertices and push it down. If you want, you can select the four vertices and push this to the front or to the back, depending on the shape you prefer. I'm going to push it to the front in the Y axis with G, then press Enter. And I'm also going to push these two vertices in the Y quite a bit, a value of 2, 2.5. And with these four vertices selected, I'm going to push it only in the Y to the back as you can see, and add with Ctrl R another edge loop and push these two vertices only to the front and maybe these two up here to the back. Only in the Y axis, by the way. And as you can see, now we have a nice looking wave. It's a fine mesh that we can move on. Otherwise, we will spend the tutorial in Blender. To smooth this, you can go up here to Object and select Shade Smooth. Great, let's rename this to Tsunami Wave. I'm gonna call it 03 because I already have two waves. And we are pretty much done. All we gotta do is fix the UVs. It's very simple. I'm gonna drag a new window on this left bottom corner. And up here, select UV Editor. And we want to enter an edit mode on the right window. Select everything with A so you can see the UVs. I'm gonna turn on this UV Sync selection and make sure that this vertices represent the front of your wave. Okay, let's select this vertices in the mid. You can use B to select them all and we need to scale them so they represent the reality of this mesh. You can scale it in the X only and leave a little gap at the extremity like this and then press enter and we are good to go. So 
By the way, if you want, you can shrink this a little bit and you can shape your wave in a different way, of course. Now, let's go to File and in Export, we want to select FBX, navigate to your project folder, to your models folder and name this mesh down here and then turn on selected objects. So it exports only this wave, which for now it's the only mesh we have in this Blender file. Right, so if we go back to Unity, as you can see, we have the wave, the mesh, the beginning. And we are going to use this in a VFX graph. So with right click, let's create a visual effect graph. This new VFX graph, you can rename it and then drag it to your scene. Make sure you have it in a good place so you can see everything. And press the edit button to open VFX graph. And I'm going to duck it right here. Make some room, you know. All right, so we are emitting, as you can see, quads with the default particle as the texture. And we don't want these quads, we want a mesh, the mesh we created, right? So let's drag a line from here and select output particle URP lit mesh and delete the quad. Great. And on this output, we can say the mesh, it's the tsunami wave we just created, right? You probably won't see anything. You can use a set size block down here and set it to 1 or to 100 until you see something. Or you can select the model and in scale factor you can say it is 100 and then apply. That's what I'm going to do. Right, so we have a bunch of waves and we only need one. So up here we can control that in the spawn block. We don't want a constant spawn rate. We don't want to keep on spawning meshes. So let's use a burst instead with only one particle for the count and then we can remove the set velocity for now and well we need to rotate this properly and for that we can use a set angle in the initialize particle with minus 90 in the x and 180 in the y. We want basically this to face the blue axis, the front. As you can see the scale is a little bit off. You can fix it in VFX graph or you can go back to Blender, select the mesh, press Ctrl A and apply scale. That's what I would recommend to do. So in Unity, it's exactly as it is in Blender. And then you can export again and replace the existing mesh in your project. Right, here we go, looking good. All right, so let's make a few adjustments to the VFX graph, for example, lifetime. We don't need this to be random. We want it to be constant, so let's turn it off. If you want, you can create a property, a float, call it the tsunami lifetime, for example, default value of two seconds and connect it to the lifetime. You can create even more properties if you want. You can control them in inspector without opening VFX graph. And now since it is a wave, we need motion and we can use, for example, a set velocity as simple as that and increase the Z, for example. And if you play this, here we go. The wave is moving. Another useful thing that we can do down here in the output is control the scale. In my case, I find the mesh a little bit too big in the X. The Z, for example, controls how tall it is, the wave, and the Y, how long it is. So I'm going to decrease the length, 0 0.8 and 0 0.7, for example. All right, smaller wave, but still tall. Another very useful thing is to animate the scale throughout the lifetime of the wave. We can, for example, search for scale over life, for example. We can control the X, Y and Z axis. Let's say the X axis is completely flat. Let's copy to the other axis, to the Y and to the Z. As you can see, nothing changes. Now, the cool thing is if we control the Z, if we animate the Z, for example, with something like uh, a point more or less around here, another point around here, and it starts small in the beginning. We are going to create a little bounce motion here with these curves, by the way. I'm going to add another point here, another point, OK. And the last key, then we can push it all the way down and it does a little jump before shrinking. First key, we can push it up. I am rearranging this so it looks like some steps, for example. It bounces a lot in the beginning and then it slows down and it shrinks, as you can see. So this is where you animate the scale, basically, the motion of this. 
Cool. Now, yeah, we don't want this to have the default part color, obviously. We are going to create now a stylized shader for water. Unlit shader graph or with a blank shader graph. I'm gonna go with blank shader graph. I'm going to rename this to tsunami shader, for example, underscore tutorial. And well, we need to say the target is universal because I am in the URP. This is going to be supported by the VFX graph, so it works in VFX graph. Turn this on. It's going to be unlit, not influenced by lights in this case. And it's going to be transparent. And the rest we can leave it as it is. All right, so this is going to have essentially three properties that are the core of this effect, which is a color for the base color, another color for the main text color. We are going to create a texture for the stylized water and a texture to div, well, for the main texture. This texture itself could be done in different ways. You, you could even use a noise, but I want to show you once again how textures are important and when they are custom and handmade, effects look much better than something that is procedural. Let's sample the main texture. And I'm actually going to assign the texture we are going to create in a moment, the water 01. You can assign the default particle or something just as a placeholder for now. And we are going to multiply the alpha with the main text color, which is going to be in HDR mode, by the way. And we can select, for example, a bluish color, something like this, maybe increase a little bit the intensity. Set the alpha to 1, by the way. Yeah, something like this. And this is going to be added to the base color. The base color can also be in HDR mode, but with a darker blue, for example. Yeah, well, that's looking nice, yeah. Don't worry, I'm gonna show you in a moment how we create a texture. All right, so that's looking nice. And this can be connected to the base color of the fragment function, and then we can split this and connect the A, which is the alpha, to the alpha input. Right, so the shader we created, we can use it in VFX graph, but make sure that in edit, in preference, in visual effects, you have experimental operators slash blocks turned on. So you can assign the shader we created right here. And okay, if we test this out, it's super bright because it's using the default part called the texture. But I'm going to switch it with the water text that I'm going to show you in a moment how to create. The base color, let's increase a little bit the alpha, the transparency, and that's pretty much it. But uh, the next step now is to show you how to create the, the water text. So I'm going to use Krita because it's free and it's actually a very good software. I'm going to create a new file with 2048 by 2048 pixels. Black background, indeed. An empty layer, and on that empty layer, we can select the brush first. I am using the Airbrush Soft, by the way, and make sure that the color is white and, well, decrease the radius to something small between 15 and 25 pixels. Now, there's a very cool thing in Krita, which is Shift W and it's the wrap mode. It will basically make this texture seamless. It becomes stylable, which is awesome. By the way, creating this texture takes some time. I'm gonna show you the overall process and then I'm gonna leave it to you. You can pause this video. The first step, well, is to create a few circles like this. They don't need to be perfect, by the way. As you can see, I'm not worrying about making them perfect. Just make sure they're a little bit far apart from each other and that you create different shapes, like a potato <laughs> or something similar to that. But you want to fill your screen with these shapes. And then the second step is to connect these circles, these shapes, with some curvy lines, perpendicular to each other, for example, like this. You see? You keep on connecting them, and then you start to bifurcate this path, create a ramification, basically. That's the second step. You can even create lines inside the shapes you created, by the way. Once you have created the lines and created the ramifications, the third step is to increase a little bit the brush size and to thicken this and to paint inside these bifurcations, inside these ramifications. I'm not doing this perfectly. 
I tried to do this as quickly as possible, but it obviously takes some time to create this texture. But it's totally worth it in the end. So that's the third step. And before the fourth step, make sure you duplicate this texture that you created, just to have a safe copy. Disable that layer, hide that layer. And on the duplicated layer, we want to go to filters in blur, use a motion blur. The angle is going to be 270 and the length, basically the amount of motion blur, around 30, 40. We are blurring all of this together. Make sure you are in wrap mode while you do this, by the way. And the fifth step is to, with right click on the layer, select layer styles, turn on outer glow, set the blend mode to normal, decrease the opacity to around 30, 40, more or less, and increase the size to around, to a value between 60 and 100. And you have pretty much the texture done. There's a really cool touch that you can do, which is duplicate this layer and decrease the opacity to 10%, 15%. And with Ctrl T, move it a little bit up in wrap mode, just a tiny bit like this. But then you need to fix the bottom of this texture because we have, because we have pushed this up and well, we have these art edges down here. But once you have fixed them, you can turn back on the main texture. Disable the wrap mode with Shift W, hide the black background, and export this as a PNG to your project. Right? Without the black background. Now you simply need to apply it to the main texture, and here we go. Looking good. That's actually not a bad texture. <laughs> right, so you have a very basic stylized water shader at this moment. But we need to improve this a little bit more. So let's go back to the shader. And since the texture is so static, let's add motion to the main texture. In this case, we need a tiling and offset node. We are going to create a time node because we want to move this. And if we multiply this with a vector two that we can call the main text speed, for example, let's create another vector two for the main texture tiling which by default should be one in the X and one in the Y. It's also a useful property if you want to stretch your texture so it fits your model a little bit better, you know, as you can see. Now, to make this scroll, simply drag and drop the main texture down here, connect to the multiply, connect the time to the multiply, and connect this to the offset part of the tiling and offset node, and we are good to go. If we increase the Y, we get a scrolling motion. Let's save the shader, go back to VFX graph and say the main text speed is minus one. Exactly like this, looking good. This is starting to be something interesting. But as you may have noticed, we have these art edges all around our wave that doesn't look that good. It should blend in with the environment, right? So what I'm going to show you now is a little trick what we are going to create is a soft particles factor. Every time a particle, or a mesh in this case, touches a geometry, it will fade a little bit. I have here the original shader. Essentially, this comes down to picking up the scene depth, which is basically a grayscale image, and subtracting to that only what the screen sees, only what the camera sees. Then we are going to multiply that and saturate it, which is basically clamp it between 0 and 1 and then multiply it with everything else. So I'm going to copy this to the shader we are creating, copy and paste. And remember, we are picking the scene depth, removing the screen position, multiply with a float, and clamp it or saturate it. And this is going to be multiplied with everything before connecting to the base color and to the alpha. So replace those connections, let me push this to the front. All right, just like this. And this float, we can convert it to a property and call it the soft edge factor, for example, or simply soft edge. And the default value of 20, which is nothing, or pretty much nothing. Let's save it, let's go back to VFX graph, let's play it and pause it. And now in VFX, if I start decreasing this, the wonderful thing you are going to see is that our wave will blend with the scenario very well. This is one of the most wonderful tricks in VFX. Blending our effect anytime it touches a geometry in the scene. And it looks awesome. As you can see, if I 
intersect this with the cube back there. It will be smooth instead of an hard edge, right? And that's wonderful. Oh, and by the way, this set scale over life should be to multiply the composition instead of overwrite. Yeah, let me change this value because it was overwriting any previous value, so this set scale wasn't doing anything. So, one of the last things I'm going to show, because this is a complex effect and with many things, is how to create the puddle around our wave, so it blends a little bit better with the environment. So, back to Blender, I'm going to press Z to see through, and with Shift A, I'm going to add the cylinder. Don't move anything, and on this left bottom corner, you want to say that it's nothing, the cap fill, so it becomes hollow. Press Tab to enter in Edit Mode, and while holding Shift and Alt, I'm going to click right here to select these edge loops, scale it down to zero with S, and move it with G in the Z axis, value of minus two. And press Enter. As you can see, on the left window, we have the UVs, and the center represents the top of the UVs, which means that if you scroll a texture, it seems like it's gathering energy or gathering something. I'm going to select everything, press G, lock it in the Z and push it a value of 1 and then press enter and that's it. Let's rename this to circle, in my case circle02. Go to file, export, select FBX, rename it and turn on selected objects only. Now back in Unity, I'm gonna say the scale factor of the circle02 is 100, press apply and it's very simple now, we can select all of these, let's create a group by the way, call it wave. And with Ctrl C, Ctrl V, I'm gonna duplicate this particle system and rename it to Puddle, for example. And I'm going to change the mesh down here to the circle we have created. And press play. We probably don't see anything because, well, the scale factor is too low. So let's increase the scale factor and still, until we start seeing something. Yep. Alright, I'm gonna delete the set scale, we don't need it. And I'm gonna say the size is 2. Oh, okay, we are starting to see something, look at that. You obviously can adjust the values of the shader. I'm gonna leave it as it is, I just wanted to show you how to create a quick puddle that follows our wave. Of course, there's plenty of stuff that you can do with this, this is a great beginning for you to explore from here. I recommend you watch my channel to learn more about VFX graph and create particles in general. And if you want to get your hands on this project, it's all available on my Patreons page, along with many other effects and assets that you can use in your games, or simply study up close. Talking about Patreon, I want to say thank you to each Patron that supported me last month, you guys are awesome. And a quick shoutout goes to the top tier Patrons, which are 3D Sorcery, Hyper Arichai, Analog Up Studios, Aviato Bali, Kruby Dubidu, Crazy Studio, Daniel Schmidt, Diego Marques, Effect Yellow, El Sharif, Gilles Walter, Goblin Plague, Guilherme Trindade, GMP, KC Miller, Canon Anselm, Lucky Campbell, Lee Ann Holt, Mark Anum, Matheus Bragança, Michael Gann, Michael Leite, Michael Tello, Mina Zuki, Mortar, Naru, Nat Sims, NGY, O'Dale, Patrick Roxas, Oitsk, Pradip San, Quentin Journaux, Radioactive Bullfrog, Revenant Games, Trump, Verisuta, Will Hughes, Will Podium, Yava, Champion Ling, and Ingu Das. You guys are awesome, you guys rock, I appreciate a lot your support, it helps on keeping these videos coming, and thank you all for watching, I hope you have enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks, bye!